Hey guys, it's Tim coming at you with an all new Halloween video for this week. When the initial promotion for the upcoming Halloween film began circulating, people have been curious exactly where the film lies in the Halloween timeline. This is mostly because in the previous timelines, discounting the Rob Zombie reboot, Laurie Strode is already dead. So it would have to take place in the third branching timeline. Now both previous timelines usually take place after both the original Halloween films that John Carpenter worked on, but this one is doing something a bit different. According to Halloween 2018's co-writer Danny McBride, We're ignoring all the previous past the first one. It picks up right after the first one, but it's sort of an alternate reality. It's as if Halloween ended in a slightly different way. In this instance, instead of vanishing at the end of the first film, or at least getting away entirely, Dr. Loomis, along with the Haddonfield Police Department, recapture Michael Myers and send him back to the sanitarium, where Loomis treats him until his death in the 90s. So that's where Michael's been for the last 40 years. Meanwhile, Lori went off to have a daughter named Karen, who herself grew up and had a daughter named Andy. With all of that said, what all happened in this new timeline and what didn't? Well, in every timeline, as a child, Michael kills his older sister Judith on October 19th, 1957, and is sent to Smith Grove Sanitarium for treatment by Dr. Samuel Loomis. Though Loomis tries to help, he eventually begins to view Michael as just pure evil. On October 30th, 1978, Michael escapes from the sanitarium and began to track down a girl in Haddonfield, Illinois, named Lori Strode. He begins his killing spree the next night on Halloween, while Lori is babysitting. Michael ends up killing two of Lori's friends and one of their boyfriends before going after Lori herself. This whole time, Dr. Loomis is tracking him down in order to stop his rampage. Lori is able to fend him off long enough for Loomis to catch up with them and shoot Michael six times, causing him to fall off the balcony to the ground. But when Loomis went to inspect the body, he was gone. Those are the only events so far that we know take place in this new timeline, save for Loomis shooting Michael, which may not have happened. This leaves out the events of Halloween 2, 4 through 6, which form one timeline, and H2O and Resurrection, which form the other. So, what did we miss from those films? Well, strap in, because this is where things get nuts. In Halloween 2, we learn that Laurie Strode is Michael's younger sister, and learn that he's drawn to kill his family members around Halloween night due to the curse of Sawin. More on that later. This film ends with Loomis sacrificing himself to kill Michael by immolating both of them with fire. This was supposed to be the end of the story, but because the studio wanted to milk the franchise and audiences didn't take the anthology idea that John Carpenter wanted, Michael returned for part four, having apparently just walked off his complete immolation. Loomis survived also, but had minor burn scars, so I guess the fire wasn't as hot as we all thought it was. In this film, Lori died off-screen, but had a daughter named Jamie Lloyd, who went on to become Michael's new target. Jamie was able to escape with the help of her adopted sister Rachel and Loomis, with Michael being riddled with gunshot blasts, falling down a mineshaft, and being pulled downriver. The film ends with the implication that Jamie will take Michael's place as the killer. But never mind that, because Part 5 basically ignores that it happened. Now Jamie's in a mental institute, and Michael is still alive somehow. Also, Rachel is killed about halfway through the second act. Anyway, the film ends with Michael, after being tranquilized and beaten unconscious by Loomis, being taken into custody, but then a man in black shows up, guns down everyone in the place, and vanishes with Michael and Jamie. This turns out to be Terrence Wynn, a friend of Loomis from the sanitarium who briefly appeared in the first film. He's part of a cult that worships a being named Thorn, appropriately called the Thorn Cult, and he is Michael's protector. Turns out the whole cursed thing from the second film was caused by this cult, who chose Michael to be their unstoppable killing machine for whatever reason. After an older Jamie Lloyd gives birth at the start of the film, she's immediately killed off by Michael. Now it's up to Paul Rudd, playing one of the kids Laurie was babysitting in the first film, Dr. Loomis, and Laurie's kind of cousin to stop them. At this point, the story is so off the rails it doesn't really matter how it ended. With the next film being the 20th anniversary, they decided to wipe 4 through 6 from continuity and continue straight from 2. This time, Lori survived because Jamie Lee Curtis was willing to come back this time, but faked her death, changed her name to Carrie Tate, and had a son. Michael tracks her down and they have their final battle, where Lori manages to take off Michael's head. 
Except, psych, not really. The next film, Resurrection, reveals that Michael, somehow, switched places with an ambulance driver, who is actually who Lori killed. Because I guess on top of being a super strong, insane serial killer, Michael is also a master magician. Lori ends up in a mental institute for killing an innocent man, but stayed prepped for Michael to find her again. When he does, she traps him on the roof, but before she can kill him, Michael pretends to be someone else to throw her off into thinking that someone's being set up to die in his place again, and then Michael knocks her off the roof, killing her. The rest of the film's a reality show taking place in the Myers house. So, yeah, as you can see, not much of value is really lost by removing most of those films from continuity. Really, the only staple of the franchise they miss out on by omitting the films from 2 onward is that they may have never confirmed to Lori that she's Michael's sister. But the rest, leaving out the supernatural elements from 2 to 6 and the inane choices made for Resurrection are probably for the best. While some of those films work better than others, none of them really work quite as well as the first, so that's really what you want to start building off of. But, what do you guys think? Do you want to see any of these elements come back? And if they reboot the series again, do you think that Lori will have a son again this time? Well, as always, let us know down in the comments, but until next time, this has been Tim from the Hybrid Network, signing out.